Hi, George. There is something I want to talk to you about. Huh? Oh, what do you want, Cassandra? I'm kind of busy right now. I'm still working overtime. Oh, overtime, huh? Was making out with a woman at a love hotel part of your job again? What? You just left the hotel with a woman right now, right? What are you talking about? I'm still at the office. Okay, then. Turn around right now. Uh... What is the meaning of this? Wow, you're pretty fast when you run away. What's going on? What did you do? You didn't tell me that you would be there when I turned around. How did you know I was here? I followed you here. And why would I tell you? That would have ruined the whole purpose. You followed me? This is called stalking, you know. Well, the goal was to find out if you're cheating on me or not. What do you mean, cheating? I was only going over stuff from work with Jennifer. You were talking about work? At a love hotel? Come on, I'm not that dumb. Yes, I was. There's nothing strange or suspicious about it. I was trying out a new method of marketing, you see. There is no such method of marketing. It's a marketing method I came up with. Huh? You know how I'm going to inherit my father's company, right? I thought that we should incorporate such new methods of marketing into the company, you know? You must be an idiot to think I would believe what you're saying. What? Did you create a report on the effects and results of making out with a woman who's not your fiancé at a love hotel? Using the company's products or something? Doesn't your father's company make appliances for office work? Did you tell your father, the CEO of the company, and your mother, the head of research and development, about this new marketing method of yours? Shit. Trying to make any excuses is just going to make you look pathetic, you know? Fuck. Fine, I admit it. I prefer Jennifer over you. You mean the woman you were with just now, right? Isn't she a new employee? Yep. Now's the perfect timing, so I'll tell you. I found a woman that's better than you, so let's get divorced. I was only going to marry you in the first place because my parents recommended you to me. I was never that enthusiastic about it. Jennifer was the one who noticed how I was suffering and made me feel better. This isn't just me cheating on you. This is true love. Let's get divorced. Actually, no. I'm canceling the marriage right now. As of this moment, we're no longer together. What? Are you sure this is what you want? Yep. My body and my soul both now belong to Jennifer. Ah, I see, I see. Thanks for breaking up with me. What? What do you mean, thanks? Yep, I was worried a bit as to what to do if you refuse to cancel the marriage. What? <laughs> Why would I refuse to cancel the marriage? Anyways, I'm glad you were so enthusiastic at canceling our marriage. I've already done a lot of preparation and am planning on hiring a lawyer to take care of things. What? A lawyer? We were engaged after all, which means that to cancel the engagement, there's a lot of stuff we need to do. You know this, right? As soon as everything's ready, I'll contact you about the alimony for the marriage cancellation and about the cancellation fees for the wedding venue. There are a lot of things that need to be done, so I'm going to need to ask you for your cooperation. We need to talk about the business consequences. That will come out of a marriage cancellation as well. 
What? What do you mean business consequences? Don't we just break up and that's it? Why does it seem like this is going to be a huge hassle? Um, you're Cassandra Phillips, right? This is Jennifer Norris, George's new girlfriend. I wanted to talk to you, so I got your phone number from George. Oh, the fact that you contacted me directly must mean that either you're quite thick-skinned or quite fearless. Or maybe both. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear the howls of the dog who lost. So I'll ignore your remarks and continue with what I have to say, old lady. What is it? I heard that you and George are going to break up since you found out about a relationship. So I decided to apologize to you for stealing your boyfriend. <laughs> it was less than one month before you two got married, right? <laughs> I'm so evil. <laughs> yes, we are going to break up. I'm going to be asking an alimony from you too, by the way. What? What do you mean an alimony? Is this too the barks of the dog he lost? <laughs> Didn't I just apologize to you for stealing your boyfriend? <laughs> I apologize, so that's the end of this conversation. You already agreed to breaking up with George, so everything's been solved and we can all happily go our own ways. Yes. I hired a lawyer to take care of things, specifically to make sure that we can all go happily on our own ways, once the marriage cancellation has been made officially. Huh? You hired a lawyer? Why did you go out of your way to do such a thing? Oh, I understand. <laughs> You're trying to make this a big deal just so you can bother me and George, right? <laughs> You're such a jealous woman. <laughs> Even I feel a bit embarrassed. <laughs> um, Jennifer? Me and George weren't just boyfriend and girlfriend. But we were also engaged to each other. So what if you're engaged to each other? Can you not act all arrogant just because you were a little bit more than a girlfriend to him? It's not as if you were married to him at the time. And besides, love is free. Marriage cancellation is enough reason to ask for an alimony. What? Also, I've already talked to your parents about this situation. What? My parents? Please don't do anything rash until my lawyer contacts you. Huh? I'm afraid you won't be able to keep your current job. I suggest you prepare yourself emotionally, starting from now. Uh, is it the case that this is going to be a much bigger hassle than I thought it was going to be? Hey, Cassandra! My dad just told me that he's going to make one of the senior managing directors an ex-CEO, not me. Did you have anything to do with this? Not only that, but he's locating me to a small branch company based in some rural area. What did you do? It's not that I did something, but that your father was forced to make these decisions because of what you did, no? What? To be honest, I was skeptical about the idea of someone who cheats on their fiancé when there's less than a month until the marriage being the next CEO. Did you not think about what the other employees would think of such a man was let off without any sort of punishment? Isn't that why your father did what he did? He made these decisions as the CEO of the company. You should be glad he didn't fire you. Huh? Marriage and love are private matters. It shouldn't have anything to do with work. There's no reason I should be receiving this sort of treatment. Aren't you forgetting something extremely important? What am I forgetting? That my grandfather is the largest owner of your father's company stocks. What? Seriously? 
Did you really forget about it? I never even knew. If I had known, I would never have cheated on you. I at least remember that it came up during conversation. When your parents introduced me to you. You've got to be kidding me. That's not why what you did was the problem, though. Ugh, I give up. Cassandra, is it true that your grandfather is the largest owner of stocks at our company? Yes, it's true. So it is also true that George is not going to be the next CEO anymore because he angered your grandfather? While it's true that my grandfather is furious at George for betraying me, it's more that he didn't think that someone who would cheat on his fiance a month before the wedding was fit to be the next CEO of the company. He asked for George's father's advice, the CEO of the company, as to what he thought. As the largest stockholder of the company, and not as my grandfather, apparently, the CEO had the exact same opinion. That's when it was decided that he would no longer be the next CEO. Seriously? And to think that it was going to be the wife of a CEO. Damn it. That means that there was no point in me stealing him from you. I knew it. So that's what you were really after, huh? Yes, and that's what you're after too, right? That's the only reason why you would immediately think of asking me for an alimony as soon as he found out the marriage was going to be cancelled. I'm only exercising my legal rights as a person who was cheated on by their fiancé. Besides, I already earn enough money for myself that I don't really care whether my husband is a CEO or not. What? I'm not going to tell you about my job. Because I don't want you two doing anything that might harm my business. But I'll just tell you that I'm not interested in any money from my husband. Um, if that's the case, you don't need to ask me for any alimony, right? You already have all the money you need, probably. Why not just be kind and not ask me for any alimony? I already told you beforehand. I'm only exercising my legal rights as someone who was cheated on by their fiancé. Doesn't matter whether I have the money or not. But, but everyone at the office is giving me these cold looks. And I feel as if I'm kind of forced to quit my job at this company. If you take money from me, then I don't know if I'll be able to get by. So can you just, you know, please... Don't you think you're messing around a bit too much? An alimony is an expression of sorry in the form of money. You can't just refuse to pay or demand a decrease in the amount without any proper reason. It's just out of the question. But it's true that I don't have any money. Bothering me about it is not going to solve anything. I'm only answering your text to answer any questions you might have. But having to deal with someone who doesn't know anything is quite tiresome. Please talk to my lawyer from now on. Fine. Let me some money then. Then I'll pay your alimony. Are you telling me that you're going to borrow money? From the person you're supposed to pay an alimony to? And use that very same money to pay the alimony? Huh? Wait, what? It seems that you're so disoriented that you can't even think straight anymore. What? That's not what I meant. Wait! I think it would be better if you talked to my lawyer. Not me. Goodbye then. Hold on! I thought that I would become a celebrity after I became the wife of a CEO, which is why I used up all of my savings. I seriously don't even have any more money. Cassandra, please, do something about it.
I blocked her after that conversation and left everything to the lawyer I had hired. I asked the two of them to pay an alimony up front and also made George pay the cancellation fees for the wedding. With that, I put an end to this whole marriage cancellation business. Apparently, the two cheaters were forced to take on debt because of this, and the two of them moved to a tiny broken down apartment that was basically a ruin to save money. But their love, either it was never there or it went cold. As soon as they see each other's faces, they immediately start insulting each other. The psychological effects of constantly living in an irritated environment is taking effects on the multiple part-time jobs they're taking as well, it seems. They keep on making mistakes, and the two of them were eventually fired. They no longer had no means to make a living anymore in their hometown and left for someplace else. What happened to them after that? I don't know. Sonia, you are the lowest, dirtiest, most despicable woman I've ever known. Pardon me? Do you know what you're talking about? Because I sure don't. I can't believe you. I'm so disappointed in what you've done to me. To us? Can you please get to the point? I'm busy and I have no clue as to what you're talking about. I'm sure you are, you Jezebel. When you have me patiently waiting for you, you had the gall to go and cheat on me with some fresh young piece of meat. Are you sure you're talking to the right person? Do you need to see a shrink? What? Are you scared that the man you love has found out about your sordid affair and now you're trying to play dumb? That won't work on me. I am way too smart for that to work on me. I see right through your twisted lies. Hold on. Can you tell me who you are first? Then we can figure out what this insanity is. What are you talking about? You think you can slip away from your misdeeds by pretending to be an amnesiac? I already know you have a man on the side, so you can quit playing dumb. Before we continue this conversation, can you elaborate on the relationship between us? You gotta be kidding me. This is Brat, isn't it? The one and only psycho ex-husband Brat? I should have known. That's right, it's me. See, you remember me, you horrible woman. You do remember why we got divorced, don't you? You cheated on me. I found out that I divorced your unfaithful face without regret. And I, like the honorable person I am, manned up and paid you alimony. Exactly. So to paraphrase, you are the reason for our divorce. And we have been nothing but strangers for the past year since you shacked up with that chick. So there is no reason for you to be blaming me for unfaithfulness. I have every right to accuse you of unfaithfulness. We were eventually going to get back together because I am obviously waiting here for you. Are you for real? But then I catch you enjoying a meal with some cat off the streets. What is the meaning of that? How can you not call that cheating? Wait! What in the name of all things good and holy are you talking about? Me getting back together with you. Well, yeah, that's what we promised each other. Don't tell me you forgot about a promise to one another. Promise? I have made no such promise. Never entertained the idea of such a nonsense promise. And will never take part in such a foolish promise, ever. Don't give me that. We made this promise right after our divorce. You got alimony for me, didn't you? Once you accepted the money, it means you also accepted my apology, forgave me, and want us to get remarried. Whoa, Speed Racer couldn't have made that jump even with Chim Chim and Plot Armor to support him. I have no idea how you came up with such a fantastical story. After our divorce, I realized how important you are to me, and I fully, truly regret hurting you with my little indiscretion. That's why I paid exactly what you asked for without question. For the past year, I've been working so very hard to break up with the woman that came between us. This is ridiculous. And finally, after much toil, I was able to cleanly break things off with her and intended to return to you with a clean slate and start over. Only to find you with another man. After browbeating me so much for cheating on you, you go on and cheat on me? That is so hypocritical of you. You have no idea how long I'd been waiting for the day that we would return to where we should be. But you break my heart and dreams by hooking up with that man? 
I will make you regret crossing me, Sonia. What a waste of time. I regret this entire conversation. Okay, my turn. One, I am single. Two, I have not cheated on anyone. Three, I have no intention of ever getting back together with you. Then who was that guy you were eating dinner with? I even know you took him back to your place in a taxi. I know everything. Dinner, taxi. That was my little brother. You never met him because he's been overseas on business for the last five years. We got married and divorced in that time, but I remember showing you his picture and we even had a couple video calls with him. Oh yeah, I remember you saying something to that effect. You had a brother who was a rising star for that media company based in the UK. So that was your brother and not some dude you were cheating with on me? Yes and no. Yes, that was my brother. But no, I can't cheat on someone I am no longer with. After going through that hell with you, I've had no desire to get another man. Then what about us? And again, us getting back together is absurd. That'll never happen. You have a better chance of witnessing the heat death of the universe. Accepting alimony means I have to get back together with you? You realize how important I am to you after the divorce? Quit with the stupidity before I get angry and never talk to you again? Sonia, please wait. I really need you. What you need is a reality check. Later. Oh, and if you contact me again, make sure you have your lawyer on standby. This is so unfair and mean. Please don't take Brett away from me. He means everything to me. Wait, who is this? After all the trouble I went through to steal him from you? After I finally made him mine? You steal him back from me? Brett is mine. Give him back. Slow down. What is the meaning of all this? Why are you getting back together with him? Okay, you must be Rosie. The woman that Brett cheated on me with, right? Yes, that is correct. I'm the Rosie that stole Brett away from you. Wow, I admire your audacity. In deference to your spunk, let's hear what you have to say. Give Brett back to me. Believe me when I say this. I have no plan to get back together with Brett. Read my lips. Me and him. Never again. Think about it. Who in their right mind would ever get back together with the person who cheated on them? Really? You don't want to get back together with him? Thank the gods. Obviously. So please do not bother me with these frivolous conversations anymore. I don't want anything to do with you guys anymore, so please leave me alone. Brett said that you two were getting back together, so he wanted to break up with me. And I'm carrying his baby. Whoa, wait a minute there, little lady. Rosie, are you pregnant? Yes, I'm due in two months. And Brett is the father. You're in your final trimester, and the man is leaving you. Yes! He was so happy when he found out I was pregnant. So I took him to meet my parents before we got married. But then he told me that we needed to break up because you wanted to start over with him. The truth is my parents are some traditionalist farmers and don't look too kindly on shotgun weddings or children out of wedlock. Well, that is the case for most parents. So if we are to stay together, he'd have to marry into my family. That was the ultimatum my father laid out. Then Brett said that he was never told my hometown was so far out in the country and he didn't want to get dirty working in the fields. So, he would leave me and remarry you. He was always a selfish one. So, to escape working on your parents' farm, he said he was getting back together with me. I told him all about my parents' farm when we were dating, but he said that I never did. He said he could never live in the country because he was born and raised in the city. Look, he's all I have. I know home wrecking was a stupid thing to do and live with that shame every day. But after finding out I was pregnant, I made up my mind to be a mother that will raise her child without shame and a strong moral compass. I would work together with Brad to make this a reality for our family. Then he goes and does this? I can't even get a hold of him anymore. I guess this is my comeuppance for stealing a person's husband. I'm speechless, but I do hope you can work things out with Brad. Sonia, I'm sorry for getting so angry at you yesterday. I'm also sorry for accusing you of cheating on me. 
you do remember that I told you never to talk to me again, right? That's that, and this is this. Look, I'm not even angry anymore. Tell you what, why don't the two of us go out to get a bite and see where that takes us? You've got to be kidding me. Before we get back together, we need to make up, right? So let's go for a nice relaxing dinner. We don't need to make up, and we aren't getting back together. Come on, don't be like that. This is perfect for you. You're single and ready to mingle. You know, since you were single for so long, you're probably waiting for me, weren't you? Don't be shy, you can tell me the truth. You are some piece of work, aren't you? We've both had time to cool our heads after the divorce and know how good we are for each other. So I'm ready to take you back and begin our new lives together. You can't take me back because there is no going back with us. You need to go take back the woman you left me for. She needs you more than I ever needed you. Don't you dare think you can use me as an excuse to leave your responsibilities behind. I don't know what you're talking about. I heard from the woman that you chose over our marriage. You abandoned a pregnant woman two months before a due date? Oh, that. Yes, that. You ran off after hearing that you had to marry into her family and your soft little city boy hands couldn't handle the honest work of a farmhand? You think you'll get any sympathy from anyone, let alone me, with that pathetic excuse? But it's hard. I am not a fallout shelter you can run to when the nukes of your own stupidity blow up in your dumb face. You didn't really think Rosie would give up if you ran to your ex-wife, did you? Give me a chance. Help me out, please. Your selfishness ended your marriage with me. And you're really selfish enough to think I would take you back? You have learned absolutely nil from that experience, haven't you? You really want me back, don't you, Sonia? Deep down, you were happy when I brought it up. I know you are. No man in their right mind would approach you because you were married once before, right? Right mind? Who's not in their right mind? You! Sonia, please. You're the only one I can count on. You were always the solid one to rely on. You never let anyone down when we were together. Even my parents trusted you more than me. They don't even speak to me after the divorce. Leave your parents out of this. Now more than ever, I want to be there for you. Don't abandon me. This is the true me, laying out my heart to you. Put that dirty rag away, it makes me sick. One time. Ten minutes is all I ask. Please hear me out. If we meet face to face, I know you will see things my way. I know that your words are as worthless as oaths with you. But if you promise to never talk to me again, I'll meet up with you. Really? You won't regret it. Tomorrow, 10 a.m., the Starbucks on 5th in front of the terminal. If you are even a minute late, you will never see me again. Thank you so much. Tomorrow at 10, got it. I'll even be there an hour early. What the hell, Sonia? You tricked me. Why did you bring Rosie? But she wanted to meet you. Because she couldn't reach you for some reason. So, I thought I'd be a good Samaritan and help her meet you directly. You know, my good deed of the day type thing. How are you going to fix this now? Right when I managed to escape Rosie? Me? I'm not fixing anything anymore. I just fixed something. Things are a mess now. Her parents and brothers showed up soon after and escorted me to their farm. Is that so? How kind of them to provide an entourage for you. The whole family wanted to meet you. It feels so good to help people out. Maybe I should volunteer more. These warm and fuzzy endorphins are awesome. You didn't help anyone. I helped Rosie. But why would you help her? She's the one that broke up your marriage. Yes, she did. So she's your enemy. Why would you work for your enemy? Enemy? Why? She paid for your alimony. How did you know? How else could I have gotten that money? You didn't have two nickels to rub together. I know that money came from her and not you. So what? She stole your husband from you. And I couldn't thank her enough. Of course she paid alimony to you. Brett, you said so yourself. Once alimony trades hands, no more hard feelings, right? So, according to Business for Bretties, once I receive the alimony payment, I must forgive Rosie for everything she did. Since the slate is clean, 
I decided to help out a woman in need. That's not the way it works. Also, Rosie's pregnant. We may have a past, but what kind of heartless monster would abandon a pregnant woman in need? Oh wait, sorry! There is a person who would abandon a pregnant woman in need. You! You selfish, narcissistic, no good, idiotic, deplorable, daft little boy! Language, Sonia, language. That's a bit too far. If anyone understands me, it would be you. I was born and raised in the city. So what? Me? Marrying into a country farm is impossible. You know how much I hate getting dirty. It'll be impossible for me to work in the fields. I hear no violins, little boy. And you're also mistaken. Farming is a very honorable profession with fairly long history. Salt of the earth people that form the bedrock of all society. Do you know how hard it is to grow delicious crops? While that may all be true, why do I need to do it? He won't give up, will you? Look, you're the father of the child in Rosie's womb. That is a job only you can do. Yes, but all this is unfair to me, don't you think? Not at all. Best of luck talking things out with Rosie's family. Here's to the hope that you can one day return to your beloved city. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thanks to you, my brothers convinced Brett to go to my parents' house. I wish you the best in talking things out with that idiot. We will. Thank you again so much. I'll never forget what you've done for me. And if you need anything, just let me know. Look, it's nothing. Don't feel indebted to me. I just lured the selfish rat out to face the music. No, you really are my savior. I'll forever be in your debt. Even though I hurt you so much, and you have every right to hate me, you went out of your way to help me. You are the definition of a saint. I'll do everything to make my child proud of who they are and will never stray from the path again. You're a strong woman, Rosie. I'm blessed to have met you. Even if talks go sour and I end up a single mother, it is what I deserve. I will reap what I have sown in choosing a married man that was willing to cheat to have some fun. I will definitely give my child a good life. You've changed a lot, Rosie, for the better. Not at all like the girl that stole my husband. After ending up in this situation, I realized how low I bent in breaking up a family for my own selfishness. What I did will never disappear, so I'll make sure my child never experiences the shame I put myself through. As the ex-wife and as one woman to another, I wish you the best of luck. Sonia, I beg of you, please help me. I'm being held prisoner in that woman's house. And what does that have to do with me? Her older brother is right outside my door so I don't escape. Why would you escape? It's just some talking, right? Might take more than a day, but some issues need to be resolved, right? Resolved! Nothing is gonna get resolved. There are just threats against me. I've done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong, huh? What are they saying? They say I need to take responsibility by marrying Rosie. If I won't marry her, then I need to pay child support. Those are the obvious choices. No threats at all. What are you thinking? Those aren't choices. It's entrapment. Do you know how much they're asking for in child support? 300 to 500 dollars per month is average, I think. Not even close. Her parents are asking for 2,000 dollars a month. $2,000 a month in child support. That is a lot. Right? I thought they were some poor country bumpkins, but it turns out they own thousands of acres of prime farmland through the Midwest. They bring in several million each year in profits. That's a surprise, to say the least. And it turns out the kid in Rosie is a boy. So since they inherit that empire, that much child support is the bare minimum. Put that way, it makes perfect sense to bill you that much. There's no way I could pay that. I've got no money at all. So, suck it up and marry into her family. Lucky you marrying into a multi-millionaire's family. Congratulations! I was thinking the same, but her parents won't allow it. They'll let me put my name on the child's birth certificate, but will not include me in any inheritance. Something about me being untrustworthy or something. Can you believe that? Painfully, yes. 
And I'd have to live in an old barn by myself and work as a farmhand to earn my keep. Back-breaking work from dawn till dusk. There's no way I'd be able to do that. That would be tough for a city boy brat. I can see that. There are no good points in marrying into that family. Hell and a hard place. Those are my two choices. But those are your choices. Think hard on what version of hell you want to spend the rest of your life in. I don't want to do either. Save me, Sonia, please. We can start over. Are you out of your mind? Rosie said so. If you take me back, then she'll give up the child support and marrying into her family. Something about being in your debt? That dear, dear girl. So please, save me. You're the only person on this globe that could possibly save me. I promise to never cheat on you and make you happy forever. Please marry me again. No. Why not? There is nothing for me to gain from this transaction. Take a page out of Rosie's book and take responsibility for your actions. But I can't pay $2,000 a month. So pay with your body and soul and marry her. Look, I'm done with this. Please don't abandon me. I'm blocking you. Take care of yourself and don't cause any more trouble for Rosie or the child she carries. Goodbye. Since he couldn't pay the $2,000 monthly child support payments, my ex married into Rosie's family. He lives in a drafty barn learning sun up to sundown about being a good farmer from her brothers. Rosie's parents don't have the best opinion of him and haven't spoken to him once since the wedding. Rosie gave birth to a healthy baby boy, but as to whether the rumor mill surrounding the child's birth in that tight-knit community, she knows this is something she brought upon herself and holds her head up high as she goes about her day-to-day -day chores. Though from the shadows, I'm rooting for her and wish her the best. 